steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop. Rebuilding a three inch scale Gallup traction engine part five. And it's time to fit the bearing assembly to the traction engine that supports the intermediate gear shaft. Let me explain. The crankshaft is the primary shaft and this has some cogs on it. Three cogs in fact. One at the other side that drives the water pump and two gears fitted on this side of the crankshaft that drive the engine. These are on a squared part of the crankshaft and can slide up and down but cannot rotate. That is, they can only rotate with the crankshaft. But both of these cogs on the crankshaft can be slid from side to side and these in turn can be engaged individually with the two cogs that fit to this shaft that's going to go through this bearing that I'm about to fit to the engine. Well I hope I've explained that clearly enough. The purpose of the two cogs on the crankshaft and the fact that you can move them allows you to select a low speed gear or a high speed gear. So what am I doing at the moment with the file? Well I'm just removing the paint because the shaft was a very tight fit in this hole. Now it is still a tight fit in the hole which it needs to be but it's not quite as tight as it was before. There's a girlfriend joke in there somewhere, but on the grounds of good taste, I will not apply a girlfriend joke to that line. I'm reusing the existing bolts that originally held this component in place, and as you can see, they are green, because this fitting was originally painted green with the rest of the engine, but I'm going to paint these bolt heads black to match the fitting. It's very difficult to do a job like this without marking the paint. I've recently painted this fitting, and as you can see, some of the paint's coming off, but it can be eventually touched in with a small paintbrush. Once the bearing was in place, I could fit the large gear. It's really two gears, you can't see the other side because it's at the other side. And what am I doing, repeatedly taking off this cog? Have I lost my mind? Is my medication wearing off? Well, no. The square hole in the centre of the cog is only a very free sliding fit in just one position. Here you see the principle. Both of these small cogs can slide from side to side to engage the gear, which in turn drives the wheels. So in this clip, I have the highest gear selected, and it's fairly easy to turn over the crankshaft. But if I engage the small cog, which is the low gear, it becomes quite difficult to rotate the crankshaft. As I assemble the gear shifters, I will show how it works in a future episode. At the other side of the engine is a small bearing, and this supports the shaft that drives the water pump. But I think this is incomplete somehow. I think there's a bit missing. I looked in every one of the boxes containing the parts for this traction engine and it was not to be seen. Maybe it never existed, but I think there should be a plate on the inside to support the bearing as well as on the outside. So I'm going to make one. Here you can see how close this eccentric is to the main crankshaft, very close indeed. So this bearing is quite important and I want to give it maximum support. So with a piece of bright mild steel, a hole cutter, a felt tip pen and a scriber, I mark out the position on the mild steel in order to make this plate that fits on the other side. First of all it's a blank plate, then I drill four holes in it using the existing piece to mark out the position of the holes. And when I put it all together, as you can see, it's quite accurately made. And then in my lunch break I painted it black, but I didn't really give the paint long enough to harden. But as the paint was obviously going to be marked by the nuts anyway, it didn't prove to be much of a problem. I fitted the part and just painted the nuts individually using a small paintbrush. Whether a part like this was ever fitted to the engine, I really don't know. And while I was in painting mode, I painted the bolts that hold the bearing in place as well. The paint on the side plates, the main green paint, is also going to need some touching in. Simon at the steam workshop is waiting for a phone call back from the company who supply the paint to explain why the paint keeps falling off the brass parts. So time will tell on that one. It's time now to fit the eccentric strap to the eccentric sheave. And there's really no room here. It's a big engine, but getting my fingers in here was really good fun. But with the help of my surgical forceps and a screwdriver and a little spanner, I managed to do it. This was easy. I'm just bolting the water pump to the side frame. I like the look of this water pump and it's got a couple of taps on it and proper flange unions. Once I put the last bolt in place, it was time to test the water pump, make sure it works. But before I run the engine, I'm applying plenty of oil to the moving parts on the water pump. And I'm putting extra oil on the ram itself. And while on the subject of oiling, I thought it would be a good idea to fill the mechanical lubricator with steam oil. Although the mechanical lubricator isn't yet piped to the cylinder, 
it will allow me to see whether it's working or not, because if no oil comes out of the bottom of it, it's not working. And now, with the airline connected, I press the trigger. Yes, it's running very well, and don't forget, one of the cylinders still doesn't have any drain cocks fitted, and there's also an air leak where the oil pipe should go from the lubricator. Now it's time to fit the water gauge top assembly. I made a gasket for it, and I'm bolting it in place. The design of this water gauge is a bit odd. The top part of it is OK, it securely bolts down onto a block on the boiler, but the bottom parts are just connected to the boiler with some copper pipe, so they are quite flexible. Each of the lower parts of the water gauge are also connected to the side frames with a brass bracket, but this arrangement is not exactly as rigid as the top one, but that's the way it was made and that's the way I'm going to go with it for the time being. Relative to steam locomotives which develop much further than traction engines, traction engines sort of remained very agricultural and industrial until they stopped being used when they got taxed out of existence. In this clip I'm removing the old bits of rubber from the water gauge nuts. These were originally used to seal the water gauge, but the rubber is long past its sell-by date. Time to replace it with a more modern equivalent, which is silicone rubber. Normally I would use silicone o-rings for this job, but as we didn't have any at the steam workshop on the day I was there, using a scalpel I cut some segments from a piece of silicone rubber tubing. Reassembly of the water gauge is a pretty simple job. First, the piece of glass tube goes through the top fitting. Then you put the silicone rubber tubing on it, followed by the nut. After which you engage the nut with the thread on the top fitting, but don't over tighten it, otherwise you won't be able to move the glass. The next part of the job is to fit the lower nut first, followed by the silicone rubber tubing, then engage the nut with the thread on the bottom fitting. But don't forget, as you tighten the nut on the bottom fitting, the glass will rotate and it will unscrew the nut at the top. So the best way is about three turns on the bottom nut, then go back to the top nut, three turns on that, and eventually it will get tighter. A word of caution here, it's very important not to over tighten the nuts on water gauges, otherwise you risk cracking the glass. Here I'm using my trusty back or adjustable spanner, but I stop rotating the nuts as soon as I feel any firm resistance. It's only just past finger tight. And that's the way it needs to be. That should be more than sufficient to seal the glass against the fitting. So here's the completed water gauge assembly. All I have to do is make a couple of plugs for the top, and then the twin water gauge assembly is complete. I'm quite pleased with the progress so far, but when I look at the photographs of the engine, there's a long way to go yet. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.